Oh, thank, thank you. you. Seriously, I just got this car and driving. That was my first thumbs up, man. Doesn't it look good? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And the interior, right, is so nice. Oh, man. Thank yeah. you. So, sh should I just stick my, my bags in the trunk? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Just, uh, just close that door for a second. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe it. That interior was so nice. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And today we have the angriest compacts on the market. The all new Mazda 3 and the refreshed Hyundai Elantra. It wasn't that long ago that if a friend stood in front of a Mazda and said, here's my new premium sedan, you'd have said, where? But recently, Mazda have been trying to change that perception, and nowhere is that more true than in the entirely new Mazda 3. More than just a refresh, the 2019 Mazda 3 is the bell of the ball, sitting on an entirely new platform that's been engineered with calm and quiet in mind. An evolution of Mazda's Skyactiv architecture, the 3 now has better sound insulation, matched only by the drastically improved and spacious interior. And this time, there's even all-wheel drive on offer. Today though, we're looking at the front-wheel drive sedan in its GT form, with a familiar feeling Skyactiv G engine. With all this in mind then, those angry eyes on the Elantra don't seem quite as intimidating as they once might have done. Now those angry eyes are there because Hyundai has also been busy, making some pretty striking visual alterations to the Elantra. We will talk about these changes a bit later, but what you do need to know is that this is the ultimate trim, which means it has every tech goodie possible, including a safe exit alarm that warns you if a car is coming from behind you before you open the door and step onto the road. Now both of these cars have a sizable trunk, and they both have decent and comparable rear leg and headroom, but today we are going to find out which one is better to live with, and which one can be more fun to drive. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell to see our videos as soon as they go up. Also, follow our Instagram at The Throttle House to see silly moments like this, <laughs> and the things we're filming before they go live on YouTube. Welcome to the Mazda 3. Very exciting. Okay, so this has the 2.5 litre Skyactiv G, pumping out, I think, Canadian rated 186 horsepower, which is way more than Thomas has got in that Elantra. In Canada, the trims are all really funky. Anyone who's looked at ordering one of these already is gonna know how weird the trims get in these, US and Canada. This has the six-speed auto and you can only get the Grand Touring GT1 in six-speed auto in Canada. All right, the Hyundai Elantra, facelifted, few things have been changed. Otherwise, it is broadly the same car. All right, this has a two-liter four-cylinder engine, which makes 147 horsepower and 132 pound-feet of torque. That's a slightly embarrassing number, honestly. So, naturally aspirated engine, sport mode. Respectable, it's respectable. It really does start to pull harder at the top of the rev range, which makes it fun. But the sport mode is nice because it holds onto the rev, so whenever you need the power, you just get straight back into it. However, I don't think that many people are going to be sport moding this around all the time. Is the car fast? No, not even close. It's actually quite slow. It's one of the slowest cars I've driven all year, and it doesn't make a very good noise. Okay, all of that aside, this is an Atkinson cycle engine. It leaves the intake valve open a little longer, which means that you use a smaller amount of fuel for the piston throw at its size, which means that the car is actually quite efficient. But the sacrifice is torque. I have more torque than this car. But really ridiculously good fuel efficiency. On the way here, on the highway, I was getting five liters per 100 kilometers for a very long stretch of time. It is now averaged with me flogging it on a back road at eight liters per 100 kilometers. And those numbers are this in America. And on the way here, James was getting 7.7. So this car has G-Vectoring Control Plus. G-Vectoring Control Plus is some clever stuff. It now not only adjusts engine power to toss some weight over the front in a corner, it also applies some brakes to help the car rotate. So not only does it improve handling, it provides a reassuring feeling. A bit like when you think you've lost your phone and then you realize it was just in your other hand. So even at low speeds, 
The steering in this car is pretty heavy. That's gonna be a preference thing. Some people may not like that at all. It's weirdly heavy. It also has paddle shifters. So here's how quick the shifts are. They're okay. They're okay, it takes a second to drop down. This comes with a six speed automatic transmission. It's completely normal, nothing to talk about, except for the fact that it seems to have some weird torque converter trickery down low. So as you pull away, or right when you put your foot down, it almost feels like it slips the torque converter for a second to give you a little bit of extra torque off the line. Okay, here in the corners. So this is where the heavy steering feels better because you feel like you've got more control over the car. Oh, I'm going faster than I probably should be. But the car holds it so well. It feels planted, but it also has a slight bit of body roll, which matters a light because it increases the engagement and feeling of connectedness with the car, which they call Jimba Itai. Horse and rider as one. And while it's normally seen as a negative, if you want to know how fun body roll can be, go drive one of the new Miatas. I'm not being biased at all. I definitely don't own one. While the heaviness of the steering weight is welcome at speed and corners and stuff like that, I have found around town it's actually weirdly heavy. There's an, it's not the weight so much as like there's an artificial weight to it. Uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't quite won me over, but the steering wheel itself feels lovely. All right, here's where this car actually comes into its own. For whatever reason, even though we have the torsion beam rear suspension, not the independent rear suspension like you can get in the Elantra Sport, this car is weirdly fun in the corners. It feels lively, it feels exciting. It understeers a little bit, but it, it's actually fun. It feels quite raw. Now Mazda has always been good in this class of car as being the sporty one, they're known as that. And I can, I can happily say this feels great. And they weirdly they put a torsion beam in the back, whereas they used to have independent rear suspension. I don't feel like that's a negative. I'm not feeling any lack of refinement to the rear end when I turn. And this is the front wheel drive. This just makes me excited to try the all wheel drive when pushing the power through the corners. Now what this car actually does very well is cruise on the highway. This model has lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control, and they both work excellently. And I am not making this up. The lane keep assist in this works better than the lane keep assist in the brand new BMW 3 Series. I've literally driven these back to back. So right now we're in the snow setup. I'm, on the, I'm still on the 18 inch wheels, but with snow tires. The ride has been firmer than I thought it was going to be. I'm sure with the 16s and all seasons and not stupid winter weather, it's better. But hitting the Toronto potholes has been quite jarring. But thanks to excellent damping, it does drop the impact very, very quickly. All right, let's put it back in sport mode for some more corners. The steering is actually, I wouldn't call it precise, but it's, it's very intuitive. There's a decent amount of feedback for what kind of a car this is, but the turn-in is actually fairly direct. This isn't even the Elantra Sport. If you get the Elantra Sport, you get 200 horsepower and independent rear suspension, and it is a more fun car to drive. But to be perfectly honest, this is actually a fun car to drive on a back road. Okay, but now it's time to ruin Thomas's day and go compare exteriors and interiors. Okay. Fun, right? Yeah, they're actually, when you push them, they're pretty fun to drive. Yeah, and they're that actually... is a very fun place to be. We'll talk about that in a second. For okay, now, I grab it. Yeah. the exterior styling of the Mazda is very good. It's the Kodo design. Kodo. So it means, <laughs> and Mazda have some funky wording for it. They say it's the a strike of a sword, a pounce of a cheetah, and then they say it's- So you're it, joking right now, right? I'm not kidding. That's actually their words. It gets weirder. Okay. They say it's seductive. <laughs> and I don't know what- Do you feel seduced? James I feel like Eggleton? there's a guy in Mazda right now. <laughs> Someone goes into his room, he's got a car up on the screen. He's like, shut up. <laughs> I, wasn't watching, I wasn't watching anything. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, apparently it's seductive. I think it looks really good. This is very similar to the, uh, the, the new CX-5 front. Yes, it is. It, okay, their design language is winning. Absolutely. Um, what about this though? The even angrier car. Voltorb. Look at this. Voltorb. Voltorb. You better put some visual there. Do you know what I'm talking like, about right now? I know exactly what you're talking that about. That is a Pokemon, for those that don't know. Or I will the, put Voltorb right here. Or the ghost one. Uh, yeah, no, Voltorb is like the orb that's red on top. Oh, yeah, yeah. It literally looks exactly like The Voltorb. one that pretends to be a Pokeball. Yes, exactly. This is absolutely the, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, the most botched visual refresh of the year. I'm sorry it is. I like the look of the old Elantra, and this is not good. No. Uh, this is fiery red, though. It's a $400 option. 
Ooh, fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, these are not. Well, that's well, a way better. Really the fire, the seductive, and a bottle of wine, and you have a weird evening with two cars. <laughs> Can we look at the backs now? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I think you will find that my taillights are fantastic. Ooh, they're like lightning bolts. They're very good, like a Zeus lightning bolt. It's. Okay, wait, before we. That's better. What's this, this is how I open my trunk. No, no, hold on. What's this not hidden rear view camera? That there? gets dirty, yeah. That's not very nice. Anyway, Mazda, which has a mechanical trunk latch. Not a mechanical, but at least a button, right? Okay. This is, so this is a Skyactive G engine. Yes. Right, which is not, is, this is not the Skyactive no. X. No, Skyactive X is coming. Yes. It's really awesome. I'm very excited about that engine, actually, because that's compression ignition. Yeah, it looks good. I'd right. take this in the sole red crystal, which absolutely trumps that, by the way. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. All right, so styling, you completely win. Interiors? Yeah. Mazda first? No, no, no. Elantra first? Yeah. Okay. All right. This is uh, not that much different than last year. Carbon fiber and this climate control looks a bit different. But honestly, this is such a usable cabin, and I have loved it in every generation that it's been. You have a face right now. You're screwed. What? Why? You are screwed. Mess is nice, isn't it's it? It's so much nice. It looks like a generation ahead. Uh, okay. But just tell me about this. Anyway. Uh, I will tell you about this. Okay, steering wheel is very good. The heated steering wheel doesn't come on very fast, but I do have one. Heated seats okay. and heated seats in the back in this trim. Ooh. What's up, right? Um, Mazda, Mazda doesn't have that. Now, the biggest part about this is all the safety tech that I get. Not that I'm all obsessed with safety tech. It just works really well in this car. Lane keep assist works very, very well. Adaptive cruise that. control works very, very well. I have adaptive cruise control. I don't have lane assist. Yeah, so like literally on the highway, cruising for an hour, absolutely fine. This infotainment, while it does look old, right? Yeah. Is actually really simple. Okay, it's like there's a home button. Apple CarPlay works immediately. I've got my map. I've got... My, it's a bit laggy, um, but I've got my Sirius XM, which works perfectly. Yeah. Everything is displayed there. This is just a good infotainment with hard buttons and a hard volume knob, and I love it. Buttons down here, drive mode select, sport mode does some things that you can't really notice that much, and I have a manual handbrake. Right. Otherwise, this is a pretty simple interior. It gets the job done. It's not amazing. It's not bad. It's good. So I like the wheel, which is the one from the Veloster as well. Uh, yeah, not the Veloster N, but just the regular Veloster. Regular Veloster. Yeah, and it has this little space here, which is nice. This looks pretty premium with this little black stripe. I actually like that quite a lot. So I found these seats really comfortable for long journey. How are they in the Mazda? Talk about it in a sec. <laughs> okay. Materials in here are fine. I, everything, like that soft touch up there. Um, this is hard on the door. I find that for my elbows, there's like... These this this color is, is... I like tan or light colored interiors a lot. This is a very nice looking interior. If you haven't been in a Mazda 3. Okay, here we go. Can we go, can I change that now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, this is in Welcome a different, to class. different universe yeah. of interior. I told Absolutely. you. And this, this color looks so clean as well. This whole center This bit. section looks so absolutely sculpted yeah. and fantastic. Well, let's this work our way around. Yeah, yeah, okay. So okay. there's hard buttons, there's volume, you've got the scroll knob to go through. It's not touchscreen anymore. Mazda right. do that as a safety thing. They don't want you touching it. It is really far away. Yeah, they researched that your did, did, eyes did this get, the Does this not get annoying, though, that only the knob? It's not super intuitive, but you get used to you it. You get used to it. Yeah, That's you get fair. used to it. Okay, what's, what's the home screen like on this? So if I click... You have to hold home. Hold, hold home. And it will, oh, and it'll toggle back and forth. Toggle back. That's very yeah. cool. Ooh, that's good graphics. Yeah, this is all new. It's all stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty simple, right? Yeah, this looks so much better than their previous interface. So much. So much better than their previous interface. The scroll wheel feels okay. I've got auto hold. I've got my, my parking brake. It's not manual. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. But I don't want, why do you want manual? <laughs> handbrake turns. Yeah, the everyone in a new Mazda 3 sedan is going to be handbrake turning. I would. Yeah, that's how you get a one star rating on Uber. <laughs> all right, we've got a sport button. Yeah. Uh, there's piano black. It's already pretty. It's I'm, already kind of scuffed yeah, up. I don't know yeah. why they do that. It's literally like a it. brand new car. It's already scuffed. Steering wheel. Ooh, it's so nice. Excellent. Too, right? They did a really good job with yeah, that. Yeah, all new buttons. Are these are these individual buttons or how does that work? You, they can be, or you can push up like this. Oh, I see. So you can click it in and then toggle. Correct. With it. And okay, then we have correct. a digital gauge that is emulating analog. So if you press info, yeah, it so changes can you the change you can the. See. Oh, so you can put your speed up there as well. Yeah, and well, I've got a heads up display too. Oh, I don't have a heads up yeah. display. Oh, is it no longer a little pop-up screen? Nope, we got oh, the proper heads-up display. Proper heads-up display, yeah. well done. Okay, this is, like, these materials are really nice. Yeah, both sound like system's amazing. When I, when I push, you can see that it might only be skin deep in some yeah, areas, Yeah, right? it's just for looking at. Yeah, but it's really nice. Well, or though, touching like, gently. Yeah, touching gently. Yeah, like a pet. <laughs> Very seductively, yeah, yeah. perhaps? <laughs> no, no uh, more seductive. <laughs> the most seductive car on the market. Ever. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty simple. Auto. I like, I like it. It's simple, it's clean. It's, it's refreshing, it's relaxing in here. 
I really like it. They've done a really, really good It's like, really it's like walking job. into a clean living room. Yes, yes. You know, like when you don't clean your room and it gets really... And you, and you get and stressed. You get the noise in your brain. Yeah. This isn't that. They reduce noise in this. No, they did a really good job with this. It's a fantastic... Interior. Seats are maybe a little bit narrow from... Ooh, up here. The shoulders are a bit narrow in this. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. But I mean, this otherwise, is this, is, this is soft for my elbow. It's way softer than that car. Yeah, the elbow positions are really nice. The, 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 the sitting position. Yeah. We have this crazy telescope and steering wheel now, which has come... So how much are these cars again? This is 29 Canadian fully spec'd out. Yeah, see, mine's $1,500 cheaper. It's amazing what you get for the money. Honestly, I know like we're, I want to go drifting right now. I want to go be the summertime driving a sports car, but like it is pretty cool to have this much tech and this much design in a car for that price. The interior, the interior of this is- I'm impressed. It just crushes the Abs It does, it does, it does. It it, absolutely, it. I can't argue with that. Can I drive this now? Absolutely. Okay. All right. 186 horsepower is more horsepower than the Elantra. Okay, I'm excited about this car because the Mazda 3 has always been a really good driving little kind of thing. So let's actually see what it's all about. Power delivery is very naturally aspirated, which is nice. The shifts are reasonably quick. It's nice that it has paddle shifters too. I like that. Okay, in the Elantra. Okay, it makes a bit of a fuss when you put your foot down, but it doesn't do much. All right, let's toss it into some corners. Now, we don't have independent rear suspension on the back of this anymore, as I'm sure James told you. But... Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a fun little car. I love these little things. It's just kind of a like a toss and hold on type of, th type of feel. It's like, it reminds me of a mini hot hatchback. I can feel the rear kind of starting to come around a little bit. The steering feels fantastic in these corners, too. I thought that the steering was a little bit weird at low speed, though. I just feel like out here, it really comes into its own, though. Decent on center feel, and the weight definitely builds in the middle of a corner. It is slow, but it feels nice and low on its feet. The steering is nice. I had an issue, the ratio in the Mazda, it's weird. It's, it takes, by that I mean it, it, it takes a lot of steering input to turn. And Mazda claim to do that because they think everyone overcorrects when they steer. I actually disagree. I, I can't one hand steer into a turn in the Mazda and I'm upset with that. This feels like it has a more manageable steering ratio already. Driving position's great. Steering wheel feels great. No, I'm not surrounded by a wonderful, beautiful Japanese living room, but it is functional. All right, into some more corners. Oh yeah, you know what? If you put some sticky tires on this, this would be a really fun little autocross car. You can feel a little bit of understeer, but the brake vectoring does stuff that makes it feel good. And honestly, it feels nimble. This is a fun car. And if you combine that with this absolutely stellar cabin, well, I don't know, what more do you want between these two cars? Oh, it feels fun in the corners. It's, this is just as fun as that Mazda in these corners. More body roll in this though, which I didn't expect. There's, there's literally no engine braking in this in sport mode. I have to brake, like it will just keep my momentum around those corners, which is unsettling in a good way. Okay, this is an equally fun car to drive as the Mazda and I feel just as in control. However, that interior on the Mazda, it's just, Ma the Ma Mazda's playing chess while this thing's playing checkers, as you guys would say, in North America. The Elantra's great, don't get me wrong, and it's fun. But this is a win, this is the one I would take. So we did both like driving the Elantra on the back road, and honestly, it's an easy car to live with. But at the end of the day, we were both won over by the new Mazda 3. It's great to look at, great to drive, and it easily ticks all the boxes. But in a few weeks, we do have the Mazda 3 all-wheel drive coming, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it.